flute is the good instrument. The French call this a billet à roue, a wheel fiddle. When I turn that crank, that wheel is going to act like a violin bow. But since it's round, it never stops. So it's got a bagpipe-like sound. If I let go of the key, each of those keys has a little tangent on it that starts to string like the fingers on the neck of a violin. I have a second melody string in there. So I can do both together. Then I have drones. Historically, they go back a thousand years, about the 10th century. And the really fun part is they're still, built, still being played all over Europe today. They're all over the place. The French consider it their national instrument. Well, the French, yeah. The way that kids here all want to play guitars over there, they play this. I met a bunch of folks from Paris when I was out in Pittsburgh once, and they had an 11-year-old son that played, and I, they talked me into letting him try it. It tore it off. It was amazing. <laughs> it also has this little drone called the trumpet that has a piece of wood that's a bridge that's not glued down. So if I speed it up, censoring the music. It's, it's funny you say that because there's a medieval painting of hell by Hieronymus Bosch and one of the big parts of it is a hurdy-gurdy. They were originally they were using churches back in the ninth century it was six to eight feet long called an organistrum and it took two people to play it. One turned the crank and the others pulled the levers. look on YouTube, there's people that have recreated them. Really neat sound. But then when they started using keyboard organs in churches, all of a sudden these things became a folk instrument. You find them in taverns, in you know the nasty places, festivals, any type of a market fair, but except for the French. The French turned it into an art instrument. They're writing trio sonatas and quartets and harpsichord accompaniment. It became a really high-end, hoity-toity aristocrats instrument. And then the, that's when you start seeing the heads get carved with figureheads that have looped backs with multiple types of wood and gorgeous inlays with ebony and ivory and mother of pearl. 1789 comes. That's the end of that. We don't have aristocrats. Tin cup and a monkey, yep. Yeah. What happened was in the 1920s, there's large influxes of German and Italian immigrants in eastern cities that brought what's called a barrel organ. It's basically a big box on wheels, and you turn the crank, and it's a music box. It does what it does, and the dirty monkey goes around and gets money and gives people rabies. Eastern Europeans saw them turning the crank and hearing the music and said, oh, it's a hurdy-gurdy, referring to the older tradition. These are still tremendously popular in places like Romania, Ukraine, Bosnia, and it's at a very Arabic sound there. The Crusaders bring... Music in the West had basically consisted of plain chant, single-line chants in churches. Crusaders come back and we get the black notes of the piano. So the music starts changing dramatically and it's much 
tavern dance oriented songs they were doing with it and it's still to this day if you look on YouTube again uh, for Hurdy Gurdy you'll see them all sorts of music from the, the Eastern Europeans and it sounds very very Arabic but the French still hang on to this thing to this day and look at it as like I said their national instrument are they all the same with the same number of strings or do no. some have a lot more strings in the church when they went to the from the early organistrums, it went so small it looked like a shoebox and there are three strings. The ornate French ones can have up to nine. You can have strings that do harmony. You can have sympathetic drum strings that don't even hit the wheel on the outside. They just vibrate on the instrument itself. So there's a wide range of strings available. They were rare in America until the 1800s, 18th century. They're here, but they're not really common. I had my hands on one that was built in 1775. Um, but by and large, they're an ethnic instrument. The English were using them for Punch and Judy shows and street fairs. Uh, the French, like I said, it was a national instrument, but very much an aristocrat's instrument. Germans used them. They called them the Dre Lyre or the, the Dre Ogle, the Turn Order. Um, the French, the Vieru, a wheel fiddle. So it always was considered in France an aristocrat's instrument. Everywhere else, it was a peasant's instrument. So they had a really bad reputation in this country in the 1800s. Woohoo! <laughs> They're a load of fun if you have you ever done any woodworking. If you look at the wheel, there's a, a layer of maple glued to the outside of the wheel. And if you look, that's the joint. It has to be perfect. It can't have anything movement this way. It can't be open or you'll get a click. So it's very difficult to make these. I made one 20 years ago and it got banned from Williamsburg. <laughs> it, it was horrible. It deserved to be banned. It was just, it was awful. So finally I broke down the fellow who makes these. His name is George Leverage of Alter Wind Instruments. And he's set up to just do these. So you're able to get them. He keeps the prices reasonable. They can get unbelievably expensive and very ornate, but his models are very reasonable and they're very adjustable. They're also very notorious for going out of tune and being difficult to make work. You've got to put the cotton on that wheel, otherwise it'd wear right through the string. Yeah. And you got to put just the right amount on and know when to change it. So they're very high maintenance, but it's an absolutely unique sound. And the variety of sounds you can get. Again, if you look on YouTube, there's a guy from France named Grégory Gélové. He's a genius on them. They use electronics, they use samplers, I mean, decks boxes, and they, it's just amazing. So it's a thousand year old tradition that's still very much alive. I love that about it. This is a beautiful instrument. Yeah, he does nice work. The back of them, even the wood is gorgeous. You should get out of the house more often. We're having fun out here and you're sitting on your can watching this thing on a screen. Get out once in a while.